boys and girls of every age Here is something to fill you with rage Come with us and you will see This is a month of Forney This is Forney, this is Forney Nothing is scary to give you a fright This is gonna rain, everybody punch a screen Curse and scream to the neighbors call the cops and die of the Corn 4 was a 1996 directed video release starring Naomi Watts and directed by Greg Spencer, who is a much better producer than director since these are his directing credits and these are his producing credits. Yeah, he definitely does a better job outside of the director's chair. Well, let's just get this over with. The movie starts out with a young man showing up at Karen Black's house. Why am I using her real name instead of her character's name? Let's be real here. You guys don't give a shit about what her name is. You barely give a shit about this movie. All you really want to see is me get pissed off and act a fool. Dance, monkey, dance! The boy seems to have cut his hand, so she lets him into her house to clean him up. I haven't seen you around here. What's your name? My God, you're hot. Well, I need an adult. She goes to help the boy, it turns into some weird demon thing, and it's just a dream. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Naomi Watts' character is Black's daughter and has come back to her hometown from college because her mom is batshit crazy. The dean okayed me for one semester, but he wasn't real happy about it. Maybe he shouldn't have come. I just... Doc? Maybe I... I shouldn't have called. God, I had no idea she was this bad. The nightmares are what made her finally call. Now, if it had gotten worse, I would have called you myself personally. The really important thing is to just simply get her out of the house. She hasn't left the house? Well, agoraphobia is a funny thing. She'll come out, but she won't take one step past this end of the walkway here. And yet, they leave this woman with kids, and no one sees anything wrong with this situation. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Huh? Think, McFly! Think! Since she's going to be in town for a while, Watts asked the doctor for her old nursing job back. Hello, nurse. Elsewhere, some drunk guy who looks like Crazy Eye Neil from the last movie sneaks into a barn and breaks into a sealed well because... I don't know. This brings back a spirit that was trapped down there. But never mind about that, he has more important things to do like drowning the repressed memories of his abusive alcoholic father in the bottle of sweet Tennessee whiskey. I know I should feel sorry for this guy, but as far as I'm concerned, he's the lucky one since he only had to be in this movie for five minutes. Watt's childhood friend comes by, whose only establishing role is the dilator in the film. Next. The next day, the children of the town are suffering from a high fever brought on by the ghost in the well. So, what do you think? Why don't you tell me, doctor? I don't know. Fevers, shakes. Definitely flu of some kind, but no nausea, no diarrhea, no sinus. 
Viruses are always changing. That's what makes them such a fun date. You must be one sad, lonely old man. He keeps the kids with more severe cases overnight, at which time the children's fever skyrockets and then suddenly drops down to normal. Well, crisis over. I guess we can all go back to our- Excuse me, do you know the way to Pines Labyrinth? I'm just yanking your chain. Unfortunately, the only scary thing about a guy with goat legs is the off chance that you might get a glimpse of his dingleberries. <sighs> Morning comes and all the children seem fine, so they send them all home. That night, the Atkins family is packing for their move out of town in the morning when their son Marcus is possessed along with the rest of the town's children. I hope she has enough pudding pops. Guess not. Because he was locked in the kitchen by ghost magic, her husband Donald was unable to save her. Damn, now what am I supposed to do? I can't cook for shit. Once the police arrive, Donald is trying to explain what happened, and if you have half a brain, you're asking yourself why the ghost didn't kill both of them. Well, after doing extensive research, I found out that... <clears throat> According to the bylaws of movie making in Hollywood under subsection 32A-264, two black people are not allowed to die in the same scene at the same time unless under some form of natural disaster, terrorist attack, or war battle. Apparently they broke this law in the last film and were subjected to a $50,000 fine. This would be no problem for any other studio, but since this was Dimension Films, occurring such a fine again would cause them to declare bankruptcy. I'm not saying that you did, and I'm not saying that you didn't. I'm just saying you did. Sheriff, I don't know what happened in that house tonight, but uh, something attacked us, Sheriff. And now, something's wrong with my boy. Well, you sure are showing a lot of concern and grief with that I just saw a raccoon in the basement demeanor you got going on there. No, no, I'm sure they'll totally see that you're innocent that way. It never looks good for the husband, Donald. Or not. Marcus climbs Marcus. over the nearby fence and wanders Marcus. off into the cornfield. Man, this kid is stupid. Marcus. You're supposed to run before the cops get there. That way you have a head start. The sheriff goes after him, only to end up dead. Better run because they're gonna think it was you who did it, Donald. Even though you was with the deputy when the sheriff screamed, have no murder weapon, have no blood or trace evidence on your body, their best option is to run. Because of some marks she noticed on her sister's neck, Watts decides to test her metachlorian levels and put some cream on it. Ow! That doesn't hurt, Margaret. It's supposed to feel good. I don't like it. My body is my very own, that's how it's got to be. I've learned this is the time to say it's not okay with me. Well, you two are in early. Oh, she had some little rashes. I wanted to get a look at him. Okay, kid. Now, don't look, look at the camera and pretend to be cute. So, I said cute, not Is stupid. Ah, oh, fuck it. Cut! That's a wrap, everyone. For Grand Island local Donald Atkins. He's wanted for questions. So, is this kid stalking Watts or the little girl? That night, some woman brings her kids to Doc Robs because they're pretending to be someone else because only he can prevent forest fires. What? That explanation is as good as bringing your children to a medical doctor for a non medical reason. The children claim to be these two dead kids who were killed by their father when the doctor was a child. He keeps them overnight to give them a lecture about it. I need an adult. Do you know what happened to the Cuff boys? They were killed by their father. One of them was shot, and the other was cut with a knife. Do you think that is a funny thing? Not before, but after hearing you tell the story, it's hilarious. I'm going to suggest to your mother that she blister your little behinds real good. Well, they can't have that. Best kill him beforehand.
You know, he could have just jumped on the gurney. You could do that? That night, Watts goes back to the office to check the blood work results and is surprised at what she finds. It's over 9,000! 9,000?! There's no way that could be right! She runs into Donald McGuffin. Seriously, the only reason this character exists is to give Watts exposition and to point her in the right direction. He's basically the yellow brick road of this movie. Follow the yellow brick road! Follow the yellow brick road! Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road! After Donald McGuffin tells her there's something wrong with all the children, she decides to take more blood tests of her younger brother. Did I forget to mention she had a younger brother? I don't see how, seeing how he serves no fucking purpose! Why are you even here? Her younger sister and herself for comparison. When Watts goes to drop them off at school, her sister pulls a tooth out of her mouth. Don't worry though, judging by the size, it's some factory worker's molar she found in her cereal this morning and been sucking on it ever since. There's a prize in every box. Back at her house, her mother is home alone and a little girl shows up at the door with a cut on her hand and after several cases of deja vu, yes, it took several cases, she realizes this is what she dreamt about before finding the boy sitting in her living room. This movie had the cure for agoraphobia all along. All you have to do is put them in an extreme circumstances and agoraphobic will leave their home. I guess we should just go around burning their houses down. That should do the trick. Are you being sarcastic, dude? I don't even know anymore. Back to these two. We're going to see the doctor right now, okay? Yeah, that ketchup stain on her lip looks real serious. She might start losing mustard and go into a condiment shock. Watts takes her sister to the doctor's office where she finds out that most of the kids in town are losing their teeth. I ran a blood test on her that was totally off the scale. I have another one in the machine right now. In Margaret's teeth, she pulled out every one of her fillings. Grace. Kellogg is going to have one heck of a lawsuit against her when this is all over. Watts' mother sees her son going into the barn from the beginning and going in after him, she gets herself killed. After getting whacked out blood work from the kids again, Watts decides to go to Dr. Rob's house to see if he's there, but before she can leave, Donald McGuffin shows up. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Leaving her sister with her best friend, Watts is taken to see these two old ladies who do what all old people do. They tell her a story. Listen. I hope the spoon's up. Oh God, they talk as fast as they move. You know what that is? Traveling preachers. Tent revivals. Old time religion. Those preachers wanted our money. And we wanted to believe. There was a boy, that boy, born of sin to a young girl. It was a scandal back then. She up and left him, and those traveling preachers took him. Okay, this story goes on for seven minutes, so let me sum it up for you. A bunch of traveling preachers took this boy abandoned by his mother, turned him into a preacher to make money because people paid top dollars to see his sermon. They tried to keep him from aging by giving him mercury, and when that didn't work, they used black magic. Eventually, the town's people found out about it and stopped going to see the boy. This meant the preachers had no more use for him, so they tried to leave him, but instead, he killed them all. Because of this, the town people burned the boy alive and sealed his body into a well, and the only way the boy can return to this world is by using the body of a child who was bandied like him. Remember, if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. This leads to the movie's big revelation. What do you know? This thing has got my boy. You tell me what you know now. Margaret is the life child. I abandoned her and I lied to her. Your sister. She's my daughter. What? It Shut up. Back at the hospital, the best friend spills some blood in the cream from earlier, whose main ingredient is mercury and watches the blood run away. Oh, I 
get it now. The boy is really John Carpenter's thing, and any minute, McCready's gonna bust through the door with a flamethrower and saying all the kids failed the test. <laughs> Stop pissing on my dreams! I don't even know why she had the cream out in the first place. What was she planning to do? Treat the blood for a rash? Anyway, can't let that secret get out, so she has to go. Watson McGuffin returned to the hospital to find her daughter gone, her best friend dead, and the experiment she was doing. You know, if you were trying to keep your weakness a secret, maybe you should have cleaned that shit up. You are correct. It does not compute. Rosa. It's time. Your boys come home. The children start cutting themselves, offering their blood for the resurrection, and unfortunately for Marcus, he's a hemophiliac. Uh, guys, is it supposed to keep flowing like this? After seeing the experiment, they figure out mercury is the ghost's weakness and fill some shotgun shells with mercury. No, seriously guys, I'm starting to feel a little woozy here. I think my blood sugar's low. Anyone got a candy bar or a donut? Okay, guys, just keep going. I'm going to lay down over here for a minute. Watson and McGuffin arrive, and after first scoping the place out, they fill the sprinkler system with mercury. Once they finish, McGuffin leaves the gun with Watts and goes to get Marcus. This leads the other children to follow him. Hang in there. Okay. I guess there's no choice. All the kids are gonna have to die. And thus the movie was over. I will end you! Watts is in the barn looking for her daughter, whose body has been taken over by the boy at this point. Isn't that just like a wop? Brings a knife to a gunfight. She eventually defeats the boy the Wiz style by setting off the sprinklers. So the kids return to normal, Wise gets her daughter back, they bury their dead, and get the fuck out of town as fast as their cars can drive them. This movie blows. Unlike his two predecessors, this movie was at least intriguing, but that was due entirely to its pacing. The movie had a nice flow that was well balanced with smooth tempo changes, so it never felt like it dragged or was rushed. The story, however, wasn't very interesting. It wasn't really bad, but it wasn't good either. The real problem is, it has nothing to do with the Stephen King story. There was no corn spirit, no Gatlin, no children killing the adults. Hell, it barely had corn. Man, they were lazy with this shit. The third movie did a better job of tying itself to the short story, and it took place in Chicago. They were clearly selling this thing on name alone, and to me, that's just sad. Well, next week is Halloween, which means only one more corn movie left. Thank God. At least until next year. It's coming! Here's one! Oh, Back to the first!